Get in on the action and make your bet with Sports Interaction. With competitive odds, the best live in play, and more ways to get into the game. Make your next bet with Sports Interaction. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN or download the app to get started. 19 plus, please play responsibly. I want to start in Tampa Bay because it seems as if uh, the most explosive thing that happened uh, yesterday was out of Tampa Bay with Steven Stamkos. I have to admit, CJ, I did not think about Steven Stamkos one iota all off season, uh, but he is in the final year of his contract. And he went to the media yesterday to express disappointment that talks over a contract extension didn't happen this summer. I'll read a quote for you. To be honest, I've been disappointed in the lack of talk in that regard. So it was something that I expressed at the end of last year that I wanted to get something done before training camp. And Julian Brisebois, the Lightning GM, uh, also uh, speaking yesterday, Stephen has mentioned publicly and to me that he wants to spend his entire career with the Lightning. I think it would be great for our organization if Stephen could spend his entire career with the Lightning. That is in everyone's best interest. CJ, let's break this down. What happened? Why are we here with Stephen Stamkos, who has been a lifer with the, with the Tampa Bay Lightning ever since he was drafted first overall? Well, I'd say the easiest answer to that is that the Lightning have a front office that is very, very calculating. And I don't say that as a, as a shot at them. I think it's actually a compliment that in a salary cap world, they, they have done arguably the best job consistently of managing their cap situation. I know they're aided by you know some of the, 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 the tax-related things that go on in Florida in terms of players not having to pay as much tax there as they do in other jurisdictions. And so maybe they've gotten player side cheaper, but they've, they've done a really good job of, of managing their cap sheet. And, you know, Julian Brisebois, to his credit, addressed this head on as well on the opening day camp. And to paraphrase what was a long answer from him, he basically said, I need more information uh, on where our team is at. Obviously, he didn't maybe state it ex- expressly, but he's where Steven Stamkos is at just because of his age. I mean, what, what's interesting about this, well, there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of interesting about this, Yes, but Steven Stamkos has had 190 points over the last two seasons. You know, he is, he is getting to his mid thirties, but he's getting there in a manner where he's still a very productive player. Uh, maybe not the fleetest of foot, but he can still shoot the puck. Obviously, uh, you know, it could help a power play, you know, he, and he's got, he's got more meaning in Tampa than he would anywhere else. I mean, he's, he literally has been the face of the franchise holds the franchise records. You know, it's, it's helped bring them two Stanley Cups and been to two more Cup finals and wants to stay. And so the fact that they're playing them this way, I think that that's what, what you know, where the, the intrigue would be. But look at Breezebaugh's history. You know, Alex Kalorn was a beloved player in Tampa, was a lifetime player. And, and he had to go to Anaheim last year in free agency. You know, they couldn't make the money work. Andre Pilat, two, two years ago in free agency. Same deal. He moved on to New Jersey after being a lifelong lightning player, part of all the success that that group has had. I mean, this, this front office is not afraid of making difficult decisions, hard decisions. And it's too soon to say where it's going with Stamkos, for sure, because I think that they, they have so much still to gain together. Like, I don't get the sense this means he's definitely going to hit the market in, in a year's time on July 1st. But, but what it does suggest is that the lightning are going to look very carefully at where he is at, where their team are at before making that decision. And it sounded like that decision isn't going to come until after this, this coming season. So, you know, Stamkos at this age, you know, is not going to get the security. It doesn't sound like a, of an extension anytime soon. And he's going to have to play through a contract here. And look, maybe that'll spur him on. Maybe that'll be a little bit of flame under his butt that, it, that, you know, it's not as though he needs it given how productive he's been these last couple of seasons, how healthy he's been too. You know, a big part of Stamkos' career storyline, right. Is, is the injuries he's had and the times he's missed, but, you know, he's been a healthy player for them through the last two seasons entirely. Um, and this is this is a, a spicy meatball. Uh, I'm with you. And I, I, I love that he came out and just was honest, too. I, you know, I have to say, just from my experience, Julian, covering this last generation of NHL players, I mean, there's few I've enjoyed covering more than Steven Stamkos, just because I do find he's very eloquent, he's very thoughtful, and he is very honest. Um, and, and and sometimes that that is honesty in a difficult situation, and this is – clearly a, a difficult situation for him, for his family and for the organization. So Steven Samkos, 33 years old, entering his age 34 season. If it, if he's going to have to play through this contract year, there's a possibility where the Tampa Bay lightning after all of the mileage they've run up from all these playoff runs, 
they miss the playoffs or they're a team that could be on the verge of missing. Doesn't that sort of open them up to the wild possibility that, hey, maybe they could get assets for Steven Stamkos? And if you're at a position where, you know, you maybe got a little bit of space, you're making a playoff run. Is it not worth making that making that phone call to Julian Breeze? I'll be like, hey, are you willing to throw in uh, Steven Stamkos in a trade? I had this debate with a couple of friends yesterday. Would you want age 34 Steven Stamkos on your playoff team? If the opportunity came up, I say, yes, I mean, we're, we're dealing in the hypothetical, but for sure it depends where, where, what that team's needs are. But if you need someone to, to play a role on your top power play unit, if you're looking for a little boost of offense, I mean, there's, there's many worse places you could turn. Plus I think that he brings a lot of intangible qualities that would be a positive to any team looking to, to win a championship as well. You know, he's got a no movement clause. So, you know, that would have to be navigated and negotiated. And, you know, I, I think it's premature for us to suggest he's going to move on. I think really sure. when we break this down, though, the hard part from Stamkos's end is that they didn't talk at all, right? Like, we don't know, but but there's a world where maybe he's willing to give a massive hometown discount. Like, maybe maybe this next contract for him has nothing to do with money. He just wants to secure that he's in Tampa. But they didn't even get to the table or, you know, have a a courtesy coffee and explore, Hey, like, might you be willing to do this? Like it didn't even get to that point. Essentially he's been treated the way you know, again, some of his veteran teammates have been treated and, and he's seen how this goes on. And I'm not comparing Stamkos. It's obviously a little apple oranges or you're talking about Colorans and Palats, but those guys were important parts of those cup teams. And, and really all these Tampa teams that had success over 10 years, a huge amount of success, the most success of any franchise, you know, for yeah. Stamkos, you know, he's, he's in the same boat as them though. He's got to wait this out. He's got to risk the fact that maybe he gets injured this year. Like, what does that do to his situation? You know, it, he wanted the, I think it's pretty clear. He wanted a three year type of contract extension, you know, take him almost to 40, ensure that he's there in Tampa. And, you know, he's, he's going to have to keep working for it again. I think it could be good for him, but right now, I mean, that's clearly a delicate situation. And, and I love that it all played out publicly. I think that, Man, we could use a little bit more of that in this NHL. Yes, we could. Yes, we could. We, we were talking about Elias Lindholm last week, and now this. Uh, if you have a pending contract uh, uh, expiry next summer, please say something because we will talk about it on the CJ show, and we will make a segment out of it. I'm not, I'm well, not hey, BSing here. We will. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, but the UFA class in 2024 Ooh. could be pretty darn good. Ooh. I mean, I know you we're talking about late career Steven Stamkos, but I mean, if, if, and you know, big if, but if he hits the open market, I think that's an intriguing player. You know, you, you've got William Nylander, potentially Mark Shifley, Connor Hellebach, Lindholm, a, a whole host of others. I mean, this, this is shaping up potentially as a class with some difference makers, some big names, you know, we, we know how it plays out in the NHL. Some of these guys will be extended. It's just a, a matter of fact before, July 1st, it, it happens every year. You see the, the, some of those names come off the board, but who knows? It's, it's, it's a different dynamic. We're heading into a summer where the cap's going to go up. Yes, and sir. Some of those players might be looking at that and being like, hey, I want to see what's like, what the open market says. You know, as much as I like my current situation, maybe there's more riches out there. And so I think, I think we should prepare ourselves for a pretty intriguing summer once we get beyond this season that we're just keying up right now.